Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today I'm out here in our fruit orchard. This is an 18 tree fruit orchard. So Rebecca thought she'd try my hat on earlier and she has a small head and obviously she didn't put the Velcro back correctly. I, we lost two apple trees last year so I just replanted them so we're back up to 18 trees. Um, we've got a mixture of all different types of fruit trees here. So most of them are apples, we've got eight apple trees uh, three peach trees. We got some white and some uh, yellow or orange peaches. We've got a nectarine tree. We've got a couple plum trees, a couple sweet cherry trees, um, and pears as well, if I didn't say that. So we've got quite a bit of different types of fruit out here. And we're finally to the point, we planted this when we first bought our property. So this is planted in 2016. So this is its fifth year, um, I think is what you could say, how old this orchard is. And we're to the point where we're finally starting to get lots of fruit off of these trees. And um, everything has been through full bloom. The apple trees are last. So right now the apple trees are in bloom, but everything else in here has already went through bloom. And um, we'll take, I'll take you for a quick walk around of the orchard. I'll just show you what it's looking like right now. But I never got a chance to get out here in the wintertime and prune it. And I know this is not ideal, and some people probably disagree with this. But I'm going to go ahead and do a light pruning on the orchard today. I need to open those trees up so the air can flow through and so light can get through. And uh, I'm going to have to do a light pruning on this. There's a few low limbs that I need to trim off so that Rebecca can mow under them without hitting her head. So uh, I'm going to do a light pruning today on the orchard. And then I'll probably spray it for fire blight because that is what killed two of our apple trees last year. And in fact, I've got another one here that was badly damaged from it. And I want to make sure that it doesn't come back and kill that tree this year and spread to more trees. So let's take a quick walk around the orchard and see what it looks like. Well, we'll start here with our Liberty apple tree. This one's probably got the most blooms of any tree out here. This thing is just full of blooms. You see the bees are kind of flying through it, pollinating. It looks good. So this tree last year, we probably got maybe 10 apples off of. And this is probably 20 times the amount of blooms as last year. I mean, it has just night and day difference from last year on how many blooms. It finally kind of hit that year where it's gonna start producing. It looks good. Now, but when the problem is you look at this and you try to look through it, you can't see through it. It's too thick. It needs to be pruned um, in there. So let more light, let more air through. And then uh, it's got a bunch of suckers underneath that need cleaned up. But that is a huge difference from last year. So this is one of our peach trees. All of our peach trees have bloomed and you can still see the blooms on there. And they're starting to wilt away, you know. But you can tell when you look at this, this thing was full of blooms. So it looks like we're gonna have a good chance for a lot of peaches. So this right here is a Granny Smith apple. Now this is our, our other apple tree that has just completely changed from last year. So we probably got two or three apples off of this tree last year. And you just look at the amount of blooms on here this year. I mean, this is another uh, night and day difference, probably 20 times the amount of blooms than last year. Looks like we can get quite a few of these Granny Smith apples. These are a pie. Uh, these are a baking apple. So let me help explain how we set up our orchard. Our orchard is set up in basically two, two squares of nine. Um, is kind of how we organized it. And uh, in the middle of each square, we have a self-pollinating apple tree. This is a red rome tree, and it's a self-pollinating tree, and it helps pollinate other apple trees. So it is gonna help pollinate the Liberty tree. It's gonna help pollinate this Granny Smith tree, and it will help pollinate 
the the gala tree that we just planted today so it's helped cross pollinate it's in the center so it can help you know pollinate all the trees around it and then a lot of our other trees are set within a distance to cross pollinate so we've got a um, a royal rainier cherry cross pollinating with a van cherry tree that's over there they're about 30 feet apart from each other where they can still cross pollinate and then um, kind of you know set up between the two squares we do have a couple that are kind of cross pollinating at an, an angle so this is a pear tree here and then at an angle over to that one is our other pear tree and they are about probably 35 feet apart and they can cross pollinate and it's kind of the same setup over here we've got a golden delicious i believe apple um, a golden delicious or a yellow delicious one of those two i believe it's a golden delicious is a self-pollinating apple and that's what we have here in the middle self-pollinating apple uh, we just planted a honey crisp apple over there it'll help cross pollinate that pink lady pie apple baking apple over there and then this big tree over here is a gala tree that it will help pollinate so tried to set everything up you know so it, everything's close enough so the varieties can cross pollinate between each other got a plum tree here another plum over there so they can cross pollinate so uh, that's the way we set it up kind of drew it all out on paper beforehand and then filling in all the gaps are our peach trees and a nectarine tree because they're self-pollinating so we've got a peach tree there nectarine a red peach there a white peach down there they don't they're self-pollinate so you can just put those anywhere we use those to kind of fill in the gaps but uh, that's the idea behind it we're trying we have two varieties of each type that needs to cross pollinate so um, trying to up the production um, of the tree by having multiple varieties to cross pollinate against so last year we did lose two trees to fire blight and this tree right here was the tree that we almost lost um, this did have fire blight and I've cut the limbs off that had it trying to save the tree and so far it looks like we've saved it but I, I'm worried about it because you can see I cut off this limb and this limb here to save the tree but it has turned black and it has like white fungus growing on it you see that I mean and, and the bark's kind of black going up and I I was afraid that this was infected or dying and I really thought about just going ahead and cutting it off right here and then I would just have those two limbs on this one side but now that it's springtime it still does not look good to me but the branch has grown and it does have a bunch of blooms on it so I'm hoping that that is superficial maybe it'll grow out of it we're gonna have to keep a close eye on it to see because that will spread to the other apple trees and kill them so we're gonna have to keep our eye on it and um, worst case scenario you just got to cut the whole tree down and haul it away and and burn it so this is one of our sweet cherry trees and you can see all the blooms that are wilting but the thing you can also see is we have cherries these little green things here are cherries that are starting to form so it looks like we're gonna have a bunch of sweet cherries the problem is is the birds always try to get them first so probably end up gonna try to throw a net over these to try to keep the birds off it seems like I always have to do that with blueberries if you want blueberries you got to keep the birds off of them you got to net them I think it's the same thing with these sweet cherry trees um, the birds will eat them before they're ripe that's the problem they'll eat them before it's time to pick them and then they're gone so so on the side of the orchard we have some blueberry plants are kind of hard to see we've got five blueberry plants here we've got a, a section of blackberry plants and then behind that we have red raspberry plants behind that well I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start pruning the orchard after we walked everything down really some of the bigger apple trees are probably the only ones that really need to be pruned um, but a lot of the other trees are probably okay so um, we'll come back after I get done pruning we'll see how many limbs I end up having I'll probably have a pretty good brush pile just from trimming you know four or five of these trees so I'm gonna go ahead and get started
So I'm done pruning the orchard now, and I only ended up doing a few trees, and I still ended up with a pretty decent pile of limbs. I think I did four apple trees that were, they were the worst trees. Um, apple trees grow back like a ton every year, and they just like fill themselves back out. You always got to keep pruning them out, pruning them back and thinning them out. I I pruned on this, this plum tree here a little bit, and then I pruned all the lower limbs off of the trees as of Rebecca's request. She asked me to get all the lower limbs off so she didn't have to duck while, while mowing the lawn or she wasn't hitting her head on the limbs while she was mowing. So I think, uh, I, think I got most of those. There's probably a few more I could trim off, but uh, overall, I think the orchard looks pretty good. The orchard has really looked great this year. It has been full of blooms. It has looked like we have the, like a really good potential to have a lot of fruit. And the bad thing is, is last week we got a hard freeze. It got down to 26 degrees and it snowed. We had snow on the ground last week. So this was all covered in snow. The trees were covered in snow. So I'm afraid that that may have an impact on how much fruit we get from the orchard. It looked, I mean, everything looked great, um, full of blooms. And hopefully that freeze didn't impact it. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think there's a potential to have a lot of fruit in the orchard this year. And... Um, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. I'm gonna end the video. One thing I'm gonna do here right at the end is uh, I'm gonna come back out here. I'm gonna spray it with an organic fungicide. Um, every year I always try to, to say I'm gonna do better at spraying the orchard and I never do. I never, the time gets away from me. Every, I'm always too busy to remember to do it. But I always at least get that first spraying in and I get it sprayed a few times. So I'm gonna spray the orchard um, that's really important for apple trees. They're real bad about blight and disease. So it helps to, if you want good apples, to, to keep it sprayed. So I'm going to do that today. But uh, I think that's it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.